And slipped and pulled down the cover. <laughs> so it's already going far better than I anticipated. Thanks to the magnificent Brick House and Rastrick Band for getting us started to the familiar Victoria Wood music arranged by Victoria's musical director, David Furman. I'm Councillor Rishi Shorey, the leader of Berry Council, and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you today for the unveiling of our latest public sculpture, our new monument to Victoria Wood by Graham Iverson. We are delighted and honoured that we persuaded Graham to be involved in this project. Graham wants to leave his sculpture to talk for him. As soon as we get this curtain down, this new Victoria will be the latest instalment of his voice and his vision. As many of you know, Graham is the sculptor responsible for the famous Eric Morecambe monument in Morecambe. The challenge for an artist created a statue of a much loved star is that everyone has a view of what it should look like. If that person has been in the public eye for decades and played multiple characters, even had different hairstyles, is there any one moment, a snapshot, that, is there any one moment which will create a snapshot which everyone will accept? If you look objectively at the Eric Morgan statue, it doesn't look like Eric. It captures his very essence, what he was like. That is the difference between a sculpture and photography. Graham has studied Victoria's face, her mannerisms, her way of standing. He has consulted closely with her family to make the statue, and we are excited to have it here. I'd like to thank Graham for his endeavour, creating this representation of Victoria, 
and I am sure that the people of Bury will take it to their hearts. I was passing this site the other day and a lady stopped me to ask what was going on here. I told her about Victoria Wood's statue and she said with real warmth, oh good, Victoria was one of ours. That warmth is something that Victoria created universally and she was one of ours universally. Victoria is undoubtedly Berry's most famous daughter and one of the country's best loved comedians. She's the favourite of millions of TV viewers and her talents as a playwright, stand-up comedian, actress, writer and singer-songwriter earned her many awards and accolades throughout her life. And it began here in Berry. She was born at Holyrood Mater Maternity Home on Berry Old Road in Presswich. Victoria's first home was a terraced house on Tottington Road, Berry. She went to Elton County Primary School and Fairfield County Primary School on Rochdale Old Road. For many years, the families lived at Bertel's Edge. In 1964, Victoria went to Berry Grammar School for girls. In the summer of 1968, Victoria's outlook on life changed dramatically as she joined the Rochdale Youth Theatre Workshop. Inspired by her time there, she got into Birmingham University to study drama and theatre arts, which she graduated from in 1974. Just after graduating from Birmingham University, Victoria won a place to appear on the talent show New Faces. 16,000 acts from all over the country auditioned in Birmingham, and just 300 were successful, Victoria being one of them. In October 1974, she made her debut on New Faces. Her career went from strength to strength, and she went on to write, appear in, and direct some of the most iconic comedy and drama shows of our time, such as Wood and Walters, a scene on TV, an audience for Victoria Wood, Victoria Wood Presents, All Day Breakfast, her Christmas specials, Dinner Ladies, Housewife 49, Eric and Ernie, That Day We Sang, and Loving Miss Hatton. You can find out more about Victoria's life and work in the museum across the road, where we will have an archive on full display. She won six Best Comedy Awards, two BAFTAs and an OBE in 1997, followed by the honour of a CBE in 2008. In all that success, it should be remembered that she was a very private person and very protective of her family. So I'd like to acknowledge our gratitude for the support from her family in helping us deliver this sculpture. And I'd like to introduce someone without whom this sculpture would not be in place. Three years ago, I was approached by a man wearing a straw voter hat, a red bow tie, bright yellow pants, and a bright green jacket. He asked me to help him build a sculpture to his recently departed sister. Quite frankly, I thought he was a bit mad. Quite frankly, I still do. <laughs> I would now like to introduce Victoria Wood's brother, Chris Foot Wood. Chris, are you, are you there? Do you see what I mean now? Hello. I said hello. I'm looking for my sister. Victoria. Have you seen her? She's not very tall, but she's very, very funny. Thank you, Rishi, and thank you, everybody, for coming here today for this wonderful occasion, particularly all you marvellous Victoria Wood fans, let's hear it from Victoria Wood fans. Now I know that Victoria's fame has spread 
to all corners of the world, the universe and everything. But I never realized just how far Victoria's famous spread until yesterday. And I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that the, the fame of this wonderful sister of mine has spread as far as, you may not believe this, the gents' toilets in Berry Market. <laughs> I believe you me, this is on the wall of the gents' toilets in Berry Market. It's not graffiti, it's put there by the council, right? So when you're standing at the stall, doing your business, whatever, this is what's written. I've written it, I've written it down just so I got it right. Afterwards, not I wasn't, no. This is what's written on the wall. Stop pouting, stop shouting. You know I pulled a muscle when I did that grouting. <laughs> and if it, I can tell you that all the wonderful characters that Victoria produced in her writing and acting, they were all based on real people. Victoria had a fantastic uh, a gift for observation and when she saw somebody who might otherwise be perfectly ordinary or she heard a, a phrase or a saying she jotted down in a little notebook she would carry with her and then she'd bring it back to us weeks and months later in some memorable phrases I've just just uh, two or three here which uh, just to remind you of the memorable things that she said for example Life's not fair, is it? Some of us drink champagne in the fast lane, and some of us eat our sandwiches by the loose chippings on the A597. <laughs> that was about life. This is about men and women. A man is designed to walk three miles in the rain to phone for help when the car breaks down. A woman is designed to say, you took your time when he comes back dripping wet. And then the female condition, which she wrote a lot about. Symptoms of pregnancy, moody, big bosoms, irritable. I've obviously been pregnant for 20 years. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the really serious stuff, we're going to have a little bit of fun, just you and me. Now, you Victoria Wood fans, great Victoria Wood fans? Yay! You know everything about Victoria Wood. So I'm going to give you a quiz. Now, this quiz, it's only very short, but this quiz, I will ask the questions, but what I want you, all you wonderful fans to do, is to shout out the answers together. Right? <laughs> Got the idea? I ask the questions, you shout out the answers, and I expect every one of you to know the right answers. Are we ready? Or we'll start off with an easy one. When Victoria was looking for a friend, the friend's name was? Yeah. Yes! Brilliant, you've got the idea. In Acorn Antiques, the name of the character played by Celia Imry was? Yes, very good. And in Dinner Ladies, the name of the character played by Victoria was? Very good. Be quiet on that one. And finally, let's have a real big shout for this last one. Very easy, you know it all. In the ballad of Barry and Frieda, what did Barry reply when Frieda said, let's do it? it. When she said, let's do it? it. That's indeed. <laughs> My wife is here, I hope she'll take note. <laughs> anyway, um, I was uh, told to give a speech, so I think I'd better give it. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a fantastic privilege to be the brother of the great Victoria Wood. And uh, I've always been in awe of her, and I believe, quite sincerely, that Victoria Wood it was one of the greatest entertainment talents ever. And it's great that we could all pay tribute to that. Now, Victoria, as you know, was not only a great writer and performer, 
with her own unique style of comedy, she was also a very fine dramatic writer and actor and had several BAFTAs to prove it. Add to that her talents as producer and director who drew together her own merry band of actors who brought life on stage and screen to the myriad of characters she created for them. And this, all this by a woman who was basically shy and outside of her work she wanted nothing more than to enjoy a quiet life with friends and family and to bring up her two children. Now when Victoria died at the tragically early age of 62, at the height of her powers, I was consoled by the fact that she's left us a great legacy of performance, uh, which we can see uh, in videos and on television. But I wanted to see something permanent, something solid, to remind us all of her presence, her wonderful character. And I was inspired by the success the statue of Eric Morecambe on Morecambe Seafront. But from the start, I wanted this statue to belong to you, all you, you wonderful Victoria Ward fans. Yes. And so it was incredible and very special that we've been able to do this through a crowdfunding appeal. And every donation has been gratefully accepted and has helped us on our way to achieving this beautiful sculpture in honour of Victoria's life. And my vision of a permanent memorial to my wonderful sister is very largely thanks to your love and generosity, something all of you can evermore feel a part of. Now, some time ago, there were some unkind references about the statue's likeness to Victoria, which were unnecessary, I thought, but we took them in our stride. But I'd like to take this opportunity today to say on behalf of myself and other members of Victoria's family, we couldn't be more delighted with the finished result that Graham, our sculptor, has so diligently and expertly spent months working on. Now there's so many people to thank for playing their part. First and foremost, Bury Council, who've done everything possible to help particularly, of course, council leader Rishi Shuri, who backed the scheme from the start. Now, you may or may not have noticed that uh, a few weeks ago, there were council elections, and uh, quite a few people lost their seats. So glad to see you're still here, Rishi, as leader. <laughs> <laughs> there was uh, five, a committee of five people, myself included, who were, uh, did much of the planning. We had many meetings over in the uh, art centre. We had many difficulties and there were many delays. But we are here now and we finally reached the point that we wanted to. So I do want to name our four particular compatriots. We have had our differences. We've argued about this or that. But we've come to this final conclusion. So first I would like to mention the arts director, Tony Trey. Is Tony about? Modest man, he's waving at the back. Well done, Tony. Well, Tony, I, I, we, I know you're going to retire pretty soon, but uh, all this may be your swan son. I think this is your finest hour. Thank you. Now we have project manager, Dana, Dana Hamilton. Dana, where are you? Where are you? She's hiding down here. Thank you. And we have somebody very important, uh, Lucy Asborough of the Victoria Wood Literary Trust. Uh, and her contribution was essential. And last but not least, and I want him to stand up, our sculptor, Graham Ibbotson. And we have a member of Victoria's cast, the guy who used to do the stand-up and the uh, warm-up for Victoria's, for Victoria's uh, shows, and I hope he, do, he might not want to be reminded of this, but Victoria told this story herself, that in the early days, uh, before people had heard her, uh, knew who she was, 
the audience uh, was mainly uh, retired people who didn't know Victoria Wood. And uh, our friend here had the job of getting them in the mood. At one time, he couldn't get them going, so it actually showed his behind. But Victoria said, these ladies have been through two world wars, a rationing and, uh, and austerity, and nothing would move them. Well, when this is finished, don't just go home. This is a weekend of celebration with other events. So do stay over tomorrow if you can. And I can recommend the very extensive Victoria Wood exhibition, which is running at the Arts Centre across the road. It will carry on uh, there until September. It's a tremendous collection of uh, Victoria's costumes, her scripts, her awards, and um, there's lots and lots to see. And best of all, admission is free. Now enough of the chat. We're here to unveil the statue of Bury's most famous daughter, Victoria Wood. So back to, to, back to you, Rishi. And in her words, as in the ballad of Barry and Frieda, let's do it. Well, I'm not sure how you follow that, but what we do have is a very beautiful dedication which is going to be given by Reverend Kate McKenna of the Unity Church here. Kate McKenna. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm the minister at the Unitarian Church right behind you. As Unitarians, we are religious progressives and we fully and, well and actively welcome everyone, regardless of skin color, gender, sexuality, or anything else that some other churches might mind about. And right now, we particularly welcome you, the family, friends, colleagues and fans of Victoria Wood. We are delighted that this statue, commemorating one of Berry's finest, is situated in what is basically, although perhaps not technically, legally, our garden. Victoria was not a Unitarian. So far as we know, she never set foot in our building or its predecessor. She may have walked past this church on her way to and from school, but that's as close as we can get to claiming her until now. What Victoria brought to the world was quite simply joy. And joy is sacred. It is transcendent and special, and it raises us above where we might otherwise be. Even if it's fleeting, perhaps especially if it's fleeting, it is a thing that we all need. You may have your own words for that feeling, and they may well be less churchy than mine. But if the sacred is what elevates us, then joy is sacred. And Victoria brought that to us, and she has left it with us. And joy and humour and laughter and love are all blessings. It would be normal at this point for a minister to want to bless this statue, to ask for divine protection, to ask God to make it special. But for me, and I don't speak for all Unitarians because no one speaks for all Unitarians, that isn't how a blessing works and that isn't how God works. The joy that Victoria brought to the world in the grins, in the giggles, in the guffaws, and in the groaning, painful paroxysms of laughter was a blessing, and you can't bless a blessing. You can, though, appreciate it, and that is exactly why we're all here, to appreciate, to celebrate, to remember, and indeed to continue her work. But how do we do that? 
we almost certainly don't have Victoria's genius. We are never going to have the power to make a whole nation giggle just because someone says the word trolley. <laughs> but if her real gift was the ability to bring joy, then we do have that gift too. And that is how we can continue her work. So if you're a member of Victoria's family or her friend, remember the joy that she brought you in her childhood and adulthood and throughout her life and pledge to share one bit of that whenever and wherever you can. If you're a colleague, remember the joy that she brought you in her work and your work and in your work together and pledge to share one bit of that whenever and wherever you can. If you are a local, remember the pride that Berry feels in the joy that she brought to the town and pledge to share one bit of that whenever and wherever you can. And if you're a fan, if like me, you're one of the millions of people who only knew Victoria from the telly, but loved and appreciated her anyway. Remember the joy that she brought you as you sat and watched her and pledge to share one bit of that whenever and wherever you can. I'd like to invite you just to take a few seconds to think about the time that Victoria brought the most joy to you, the most joy-filled memory you have of her. And hold on to that, because just as in the absence of Victoria herself, this statue stands as a permanent national tribute to all that she did and all that she was to the world. That memory of joy stands as a personal, per personal tribute to all that she was to you as an individual. So instead of making a blessing on this statue, let's ask for a blessing from the statue. But as Victoria stands smiling out over the library she so famously borrowed from, she brings us a reminder of joy and a prompt to share that joy. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend McKenna, for that beautiful dedication. Well, we are now at that time where we are going to unveil this sculpture. And I think it's only right that that honour should go to someone who needs no introduction, Ted Robbins, but someone who was a close personal friend and colleague of Victoria. So not to delay things any further, we're just going to do it, handing over to Ted Robbins. Thank you, Rishi. Thank you, uh, Reverend Kate. Thank you, Chris, brother. And if you think I'm going without saying a few words into a microphone, don't really think coming. <laughs> It's so moving for me to think that I was at the very start of Victoria's career and he wouldn't want us. Um, as you pointed out, Chris, excuse my voice, I've got another book in in November. Um, <laughs> that I did the warm-up, that's absolutely true, 1981 was it? And she kept the faith with me. What happened was, I'd done my joke in front of this uh, legion of ladies, all with vision specs, uh, lovely hairdos, all with uh, packed lunches with thermos flasks, and it was like a staring competition. <laughs> and one woman was heard to say to another, and this was a joke between Victoria and Julie for many years, we're missing Brideshead for this. <laughs> 
And I did. The, the old rugby player in me broke out. And I, I did a moody. I dropped my trousers. And this Victoria said, well, these ladies had lived through two world wars. They weren't going to be impressed by Ted Robbins' bottom. <laughs> so it's very fitting, in a way, that I should be here. She kept faith with me. And then I'm here at the finale of her career as it is. I can't believe it's me. Out of all the wonderful people she's worked and worked with and are still working, I'm the only one who's obviously not working at the moment. <laughs> but I'm available. Um, and that's what Victoria brought. She brought laughter. She laughed at my cheesy old gags. She loved them. She also uh, was wonderful. My sister Kate had a wonderful role in um, the Dinner Ladies. I don't remember. She was another Babs. She was Babs from Ermston. And honestly, I was watching it home with my wife. And she put her welding down for a moment. And she said, that actor, I said, she's funny. She says, I come from Ermston. There's two ways from Ermston. I said, isn't she wonderful? She said, it's your sister, you fool. <laughs> and in the script, she looks at the, uh, the, the uh, toasting machine. She goes, oh, Sir Philip's double-head overdrive, isn't it? And Stan is very impressed with this. He said, there's not many lasses would recognise a piece like that. She said, I'm going to go on, mastermind about it, but I'm allergic to leather. <laughs> So I remember these lines, I remember these great gags. She always gave the gags to the people who would get the laugh. She didn't want them all herself. She was the most generous of souls. She was a shy show off. We shan't see her like again. So it's with great honor and, and gratitude and a sense of humbleness that, that thank you so much for asking me to, uh, to open this. I know a, a, a great friends from all over the country. Sammy's here, a great friend of us, Mayor Meres. But uh, thank you very much for coming, ladies and gentlemen. And so we're going to have a countdown while I find out how to get this thing off. <laughs> she swore to me she was a size 16. So, from 10, here we go. Can't give me a hand, Graham. 10, 9, 8, 7, Thank you. Okay, just one this way for camp, please. Okay. Okay, everyone, just here, please, for me. Thanks. Thank you.